Hey YouTube, how's it going? I hope everyone's last month of the year is going to be great. And uh, this is my little review on the LA Auto Show this year, 2018. I decided to uh, pay a little visit with my family. And just thought uh, I'd videotape a couple of cool cars that I thought worth mentioning. And hopefully I can give you guys some honest opinions of how I felt and how the car looks and all that. Before I get to the main floor, I met this guy named Michael Lewis. Uh, he drives for Hyundai and Veloster team, I believe. Um, looked him up a little bit. He seems pretty successful at it. And they were giving up free t-shirts and he seemed a real nice guy. So uh, here's my little meet with him. Yeah, little hobby. <laughs> where, uh, where do you post your videos, man? YouTube. Yeah, like, YouTube. What do you, uh, what's your channel like? What kind of content do you have? Oh, it's a GT350 Shelby Mustang. Oh, nice, yeah, man. Yeah, cool tracking and stuff. Yeah, like track video. stuff and yeah, track 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 video. Do you drive a lot? Or do you yeah, 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 I like to. Awesome. What like, tracks do you go to? Like, uh, I go to the one in uh, the Fontana. Fontana uh, Speedway. Speedway, yeah. Auto Club Speedway. It looks really cool, man. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice track. Yeah, yeah, it's scary, but... Yeah, this guy's a yeah. really genuinely <laughs> nice guy. He spent his time with everyone he met and took photos and... Uh, just came across real, real nice so you guys can look him up and the very first car that greets you as you walk in was a r8 v10 this is not the refreshed version this is the the older version i was a little sad about that but uh, nonetheless this very very nice looking car it draws a lot of attention and obviously the the whole electric movement wasn't too impressed by how it looks it just kind of looks like a good old q5 uh, this was a car that surprised me by the way, new Hyundai Palisade, uh, it's their three row SUV and Hyundai is really stepping up their games these days, uh, you know they're mixing things up, the design, uh, they're taking things from very successful companies, the front end look like Escalade-ish, the rear end, the tail lamps here as you can see kind of remind me of almost like a Bentley looking, maybe also another uh, little take from Cadillac. Uh, maybe a mixture of, of a little bit of both, but uh, nonetheless, it really doesn't look cheap. It looks uh, very high quality, high end, and uh, even the, the materials that they use, as you can see here on the side, is nice soft padded material. All the plastics for, uh, uh, well, most of them at least, were softer to touch. And there are plenty of room for, for adults to fit in both uh, second row and third row. Uh, the car is pretty large size and uh, definitely large amount of cargo space as well if you fold the rear the third row seats down and moving the second row seats front and back uh, for easy access wasn't that difficult either the buttons here I did uh, try them on it's not Audi quality or or Porsche quality but I mean it's definitely still doesn't feel cheap by any means the handle felt a little cheap, those are actual aluminum, uh, or it, does, it didn't feel like it, it felt like uh, painted plastic. Uh, but again, interior, it kind of resembles the new Mercedes uh, E-Class or S-Class, that, that whole long dash that connects together and it's uh, all digital. Uh, again, just taking things from uh, successful companies and Taking that to their own, and uh, you know, I, I commend them for that. It's you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to uh, to improve, and uh, definitely depending on how much these things go for. I don't, I, they didn't say uh, exact cost of these things, but I think it's gonna be a bargain uh, for what it is. Uh, I actually might even consider it for my own family car. So again, that was interesting. Well, and there's a whole side of Toyota of boring cars, so not much to talk about there. I don't know what Toyota is doing these days. Yep, they brought some uh, manual in Corolla, so yep, good for them. Uh, and this is a new Mazda 3, all new. And Mazda is probably one of the Japanese com companies that, that are stepping up their games and kind of do what, what people want, what enthusiasts want, kind of listening to them. Uh, and you know it's it's great that uh, they're the one of the first ones to jump on the whole efficiency game and the lightweight minimalistic game I really like these two uh, taillights uh, the two round headlights on each side kind of reminds me of you know the old skyline ish uh, and of, of course you cannot uh, skip out on the Miata the RF um, looks a little bit too small sometimes especially when 
adult male sits in it. Just sometimes the proportions don't go that well unless you're a, a smaller uh, bloke. But either way, I mean that car. I've sat in it. I've, I've driven it before. It's it's perfect car for all your driving senses. Uh, and here's a Julia Quadrifoglio. Uh, only reason why I decided to uh, put this car in here it was that that paint job really caught my eyes. It's uh, almost a three-layer metallic paint type of feel to it. A lot of flakes on it, and it just pops in the in the showroom. Uh, this this is a great car to a certain extent. I think Alpha still needs to work on their uh, interior uh, if they're gonna draw more buyers' attention. And uh, I also did hear the obvious problems, electronics, and small problems, minor problems. There hasn't been reported a lot of major severe problems that what a lot of people have been worried about. Uh, but evidently the driving characteristics, driving dynamics on this car are great. Uh, I really wish to drive this someday, but for now, just kind of while looking at how it feels and um, the nice glossy uh, carbon spoiler there. And the interior again, this is where it really kind of breaks down on this car. The, the steering wheel is, is not bad. The, the leather on it is soft and Alcantara is not bad, but all these switch gears, the knobs are all, as you can see there, it's all wiggly and rambly. The, the knobs don't feel great. The movement don't feel great. It's all a little loose. It's just, again, it, it doesn't feel like $80,000 car. Uh, it just doesn't. The vent, the air vent, uh, that was one thing that, that felt real good to my hands. It had a nice solid feel to it. Uh, but other than that, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not even going to talk about infotainment. I hear horror stories about them. And here's a little car that's uh, sad to see go by because I know they're not going to build these things anymore off a 4C Spider. Again, the same paint. The Alpha makes beautiful exterior and beautiful paints. The all exposed carbon, uh, gloss carbon looks great. The weave uh, again pops in the in the showroom, and I love the blue and yellow contrast contrast stitching in there. And it's a great little little car. I, I've I've saw a guy bring this to a track day once, and he had a nice spoiler on it, and you know he was holding on his own. And it's it's a fun car to drive. It, it has to be car this light and with this much power uh, too bad uh, not a lot of people want these things anymore and this car actually also had a acrophobic uh, rear exhaust I don't know if it's stock or if it's aftermarket but that was interesting here's a car that also caught my eye uh, it's a Jaguar I-Pace it's an all-electric vehicle uh, it has a huge hood scoop there just kind of like the Maybe baby a Ferrari 488 Pista. <laughs> I don't know why they do that for. I don't know if they need that much cooling or they need more downforce. I have no idea because most electric cars don't have those type of uh, vents to uh, get that extra cooling. I'm not sure. But uh, again, the door handles remind me of the, the, well, I believe those are Range Rover. They all share the same parts. But this car, what was interesting was it sits really low to the ground. It almost feels slightly raised up sedan. It's, it does not sit like an SUV. It has a shape of an SUV. It almost looks like a, it felt like a, a big hot hatch, almost. Uh, maybe a, a hybrid between that and an SUV. Uh, the trunk space doesn't look that tall. It, it doesn't have a huge trunk capability, but had a massive 22 inch rims though Jaguar for you right there and again here's the interior I mean it's not bad it, it looks fairly premium but they're all hidden places where they save save money and you can you can if you look really into it you can fill them in this little uh, those plastic looking aluminum fake type of uh, trims and um, 
it, you can already see those gloss black drawing attention to fingerprints it's looking all dirty and I don't know if you just saw that but when I was playing around with some of these knobs the electronics the, it had a little bit of delay already I'm sure that's gonna be a worse problem as you as you keep using these things um, so yeah, infotainment is not their strongest suit uh, it looks nice though I mean, on the outside, inside, it looks fairly premium. I've, and the, the price isn't going to be that bad either. I believe it's going to be around mid 60s, uh, something like that. And can't go without a ZR1, the car that will smoke any GT3s out there at the track. I'm really looking into the mid-engine Corvette that's coming out. By the time I'm going to be ready to uh, sell and let go of my GT350, this uh, the new Corvette, maybe the high-end one, either the new Z06 version or new ZR1 version of it, I might uh, consider them versus the new uh, 992 Carrera. And that will come at the end of the video as well. Here's a new 8 series and compared to the, the pictures that I've seen I was expecting it to look incredible and it does but it really doesn't make a huge change from good old 6 series Grand Coupe. It, it feels very similar to that. Even the rear, the, the rear taillights I thought it, it would look very different but in reality it, it really doesn't. Uh, you know the lights don't have too much 3D effect to it. It really remind me of just old 6 Series Grand Coupe, uh, not much more than that. Probably the biggest difference comes from the interior, uh, but otherwise the outside, I mean, don't get me wrong, 6 Series uh, Grand Coupe already looked great before. It was probably the best looking BMW, to be honest, uh, on the outside. And, and this kind of carries over, right? there's a little bit of copper trim there. And the interior here it is, the new door handle is shared with the new 3 series as well, it's nice and high quality feel to it, I like the little kink that they have. And you really sit low in this car, I was surprised by it when I sat down. It almost feels like when I had my Boxster before, you really sit that low, it feels like it. And this type of, the, the crystal glass, uh, the buttons, it, it really pops. Uh, I don't know if, if this catches that well, but those every button down there, it has almost crystal effect to it and whenever the, the light hits it. And feels and looks very high quality and, and, and expensive. And I like that. Uh, the, and this car, again, as soon as you sit in it, you look at everywhere, you, you can feel that this is going to be a nice, comfortable, luxury cruiser of a car. And, and every part of the car just kind of shouts at you in that manner. And uh, a great car. And here's what everyone's been uh, waiting for, the new 3 Series, and this is a 340M, 340i. Uh, again, uh, it's uh, just good old 3 Series. The, the front, I say it looks about 10-15% more aggressive with those front bumper lines and the headlights and the kidney grills that are all connected now. The, the kidney grills look a little bit off now because it, it, the inner, inner part looks is closed up. Um, but either way, they, it's not a huge difference from the old 3 series. It's not a, uh, it's definitely a bit of an evolution. It's, uh, I wouldn't consider a big, big, uh, major change. Um, but again, I think they're going with this type of copper accent. It's their theme, I guess now. But uh, it's, it's not a bad material. It feels nice to touch. It feels metallic to touch. And the rear seat legroom looks pretty similar to what it used to be. I, I did hear that it's a little bit larger than before, maybe like an inch or so in the rear legroom, which is always welcome. And this is the most controversial part, the rear taillights that mimic Lexus IS. But in, re in real life, when I looked at them with that bit of 3D shape to them and the, the lighting of it, it does look different than, than Lexus. It, it When I looked at it up close, it didn't shout Lexus at me. It just looked like another 3 Series, really. Um, 
And also at least they didn't bring out those dang halogens they always do in these first generations. Finally go with the LEDs. And the interior, yep, it's a huge improvement. Uh, the dash, it's got that 3D, um, not, I'm sorry, not 3D, the, the whole LCD cluster to it. Uh, I personally rather have analog, it's my personal choice. Uh, you know, it's to me harder to read those gauges, especially when you're really focused on driving. If you're like at a track or something, you just want something that's gonna be very easy to read, not a fancy looking gauge. But that's just me. I'm sure 90% of people out there would prefer this. But th those buttons down there actually felt really cheap, to be honest, guys. When I when I push some of those buttons, they're not individual. They they sit all together as one piece, and it kind of lifts up on the other places when you press on one side. It's I don't know about that one. Um, here I try to do some hand gesture, I, but it didn't work. I don't know if it has it on this car or not. But the touch screen was pretty responsive. Uh, well, it's BMW, their iDrive is always great. And the buttons are just good old BMW feel to it, no changes there. Uh, only difference I felt was that the steering wheel, the, 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 the paddle shifter felt a little better too. And here's a little uh, hidden gem of a car that I saw as a brand new uh, out of the Lexus ES. And the reason why I say it's a hidden gem is the interior is just, I think they're a really setting a benchmark on their own rights in this segment. Uh, I mean, for the price, the way the vehicle shows itself, it doesn't remind you of any other companies. They have their own design theme and every knob and button is solid and it has high quality to it. You really can't find any part in this car that felt cheap. Uh, even that little clock right there was very, very nice looking. Uh, actually, I thought it looked better than once in the, uh, the Mercedes, AMGs, and high-end high Mercedes. Uh, some of these are gimmicky, those little knobs on the top, it just does some traction control buttons and things like that. But either way, I mean, it all there to make it look a little different and a little cooler, and I appreciate that. Uh, however, part I do not appreciate is the exterior. Uh, whoever is in charge of Lexus designing, uh, needs to be shot. I have no idea why they keep pushing this design. It's time to let go and do something that's gonna be at least more elegant and that go better with what they're trying to push. The, the front end, well the rear end isn't as bad but the front end I just cannot get there. And here's a new AMG GT Pro. I believe it ran Nürburgring in 7 minutes and 4 seconds, or similar to that. Well, it's another AMG GT. It's an incredible car. This car is actually one of my possible upgrades uh, from GT350 to my next car. It's, and with the new refresh interior, the, the gauges are updated. It's all digital screen now. and. And I just love that proportion, the long hood lines and short rear deck. And again, those front lips and look look great. I wish I could have uh, gotten closer to it, but they had it all marked off. And this is an NSX. I've actually never seen this car in, up in person until today. And it, it was, uh, well, it's, it actually looked better than I thought in the pictures. All these little lines and vents. Uh, in real life looks a lot more exaggerated and it, it brings out more of an exotic car feel to it. Um, even the rims had the, has a very gloss, kind of transparent gunmetal to it. It, it. it was different than any other gunmetal I've seen. And the hood, the hood vents there is all uh, obviously functional and you can see the inner part of the, the hood there through them. And uh, the front end looks fantastic. Again, as soon as you see it, you know it's, it's Acura. There's no mistake to it. And that, that's also important, especially in this price range. You don't want the car to be trying to be someone else. And 
and I couldn't actually have a seat in this car. I just didn't want to wait in line. And the guy over there wanted you to sign into some show sort, give your personal information. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna do that just to sit in this car, in this car for 10 seconds. But either way, yeah, I mean, this is not a bad car, just a bad price on it. And this is another huge surprise to me, Lincoln Navigator and Aviator, that's new. The Aviator, I couldn't see it in because they had it blocked off, so I had to go in a, in a Navigator. And uh, probably one of the best looking SUVs inside and out in this show. Uh, and again, the things that they have in this car, everything just goes so well and really feel like you're king of the road sitting in this thing the interior the trim pieces all this gloss and again the gloss black I personally don't like usually but for some reason in this car with the chrome work and the, the gloss piano black goes just so well and yeah maybe when they get dirty they won't be but at least when I was sitting in it, it didn't look too dirty and yeah it's, I mean plenty of room everywhere and every button and every knob and anything you touch is all soft and high quality and just look at that the, the front view center fascia and again everything just nothing felt cheap in here nothing creaks or it didn't feel you know sometimes you go into these things and you touch these panels and sometimes those rear displays you, you push them around and it kind of moves around and things like that but nothing like that here it felt solid and the front seats the f again look at those each leg support individual support they all flex individual to each other it was incredibly comfortable probably one of the best seats I've ever sat in probably even better than the, the new Volvo seats uh, but other than that yeah I mean America look at those cup holders you need those yeah, I mean even those little handles, high quality leather with nice chrome treatment and everything soft and nice high quality leather. And I believe Aviator has very similar interior. There's a lot of design cues that they just took it from Navigator. So uh, Aviator may just be a big hit and something I will also definitely look into. And here's a new A7 with the rear tail lights and the amazing LED and again every time I look in the trunk of A7 it's, it amazes me how much this thing can carry it's literally just like a mini SUV back there only thing with A7 though is it's always been the, the rear headroom so this is why I got in there first thing to check it out it felt a little bit better than before because before I my neck was actually tilted down a little bit but now my my head can actually stay straight up but my my hair still touches the roof I don't know if you can see it here a little bit so but it, I mean it didn't feel super uncomfortable but I mean and the, the position of the, the vent was interesting see the, the B pillar right there but otherwise just feels like normal Audi only thing about Audi for some reason to me uh, everything that the, all the designs look expensive but when you get in it I don't know if anybody agrees with me here but when you get in it and touch and feel around it 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 never felt as luxurious or nice as for example a Mercedes counterpart um, I'm not sure if that's just me I don't know if you guys concur leave me comments but uh, that's just how I felt and again the interior is just good old Audi with the dual screen setup so I, I, I'm gonna skip that and again the front end looks just like another Audi as well I mean it it, it looked great on the photos I wasn't too impressed um, it's not a bad looking car obviously but and this car was crazy looking I don't even know what this is it's probably some out just straight out of Batman movie but uh, with all those angles and then the body work it it looked like a freaking Darth Vader slash Batman you know made something together and I have no idea what this is for either but when I looked in the back it looked like a, like a freaking semi clubhouse in there 
so yeah no idea if you can purchase this or not but it was one of the cool cars out there and here it is the Porsche and Porsche had their own little part of the building all by themselves must have spent a lot of money on it uh, and again here's a new 911 uh, GT2 RS Cup yep the car that you won't be able to buy even if you wanted to just like some of the other Porsches it's too bad but yeah there's a new uh, 992 actually when I first looked at it right here from this angle as I was approaching it I thought that was 991 generation from the front this yellow really soaked up a lot of lighting and you really couldn't see that fender flare on the front end the extra width that this thing gets so here I'm still thinking is this the new one or not so I go to the side and I look at the new door handle and immediately I know that's a new one because it's sitting flush with the body panel and when you go to the rear yep here it is so yeah I, I mean really as much as the other journalists say it's a huge improvement or whatnot it's it's an awesome car uh, to be honest this versus for someone without untrained eyes that again it's another 911 to them but again definitely to me it's it's definitely an improvement uh, the rear uh, the car does feel a little taller but the width of the car uh, that the generates uh, it it makes up for it. I think the car still has great proportions to it. The new carbon cloth interior right there, um, that little, uh, I think that's probably the trim to get if you get one of those retro looking colors that it brings now. Uh, that cloth in there look fantastic. It has a very nice 3D uh, feel to it and uh, kind of retro high grade cloth looking. The new green color that they have now, the dark green color, that's going to be the color to get, guys. And here's a new LED a matrix light that they have. Um, and uh, these are the new uh, Carrera wheels, the 20 inch and 21 inch in the rear. You're going to get hit so hard when you have to replace those tires. The tires are going to be expensive for this car. And you're not going to get a lot of options on tires either. And I couldn't really get a good look at the interior because they had all the doors locked. That was too bad. And for this time, something that was surprising was those quad tailpipes uh, that comes with stock look better than the sport uh, tailpipes. Uh, it almost has a matte aluminum finish to them, uh, the quad ones. And it really looked high quality and nice versus the, the oval, which you'll see right here in just a second. Uh, it comes with this chrome ring to it, uh, it almost looks fake, um, uh, just the, the exhaust rims these days that they put uh, on the as part of the bumper, but uh, again, this is a little interesting. But yeah, guys, uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it. I had to cut it a little short, try to cram all the videos in. Uh, but again, if you guys have any uh, questions, leave me comments and uh, let me know. Uh, please subscribe uh, and uh, thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next couple videos that's coming up soon. Have a great day. Bye.